Hey, my name's Kieran and I'm here with the BMS and I want to make a bet with you today. That is right, you watching this video right now. I'm willing to bet 10,000 pounds of my own personal money that you are a user of the internet. I feel fairly confident that no one is gonna be able to take my money, but if someone does go through the effort of downloading this video, burning it to a VHS tape, and then playing it to their granddad, then fair enough, I suppose. But seeing as you are a user of it, you probably know how great the World Wide Web is. For someone like myself, I pretty much grew up with the internet being a thing. But talking to my mum, I found out that before it was invented, life was pretty boring. They had to read books. And I don't even mean like Facebook either. I mean real books made of paper. But by reading these books made of paper, which comes from wood, they may have been closer to the internet than they ever realized. No, I'm not talking about them being close to the World Wide Web. I'm talking about the Wood Wide Web, a version of the internet which has been around for millions of years, but I'm willing to bet none of you have ever even heard of. If you've ever seen the movie Avatar, you will know it is about a distant planet where all of the plants are interconnected by a special electromagnetic force. This may sound like total science fiction, but it does actually happen here on Earth in some form through the World Wide Web. If you saw our video about the dinosaurs, you may have already heard of the word mycorrhiza, and you will know that these are one of the four main types of fungi which are out there. Mycorrhiza form relationships with the roots of plants and both of the organisms tend to benefit from this relationship. The mycorrhiza will in many cases deliver nutrients and minerals to the plant because it is so good at spreading out underground that it has a much further reach than any roots of any plant could hope to do. The mycorrhiza in return will usually get a little kickback in the form of carbohydrates from the plant which provide energy gained by the plants during photosynthesis. In fact, the relationship between mycorrhiza and roots is so beneficial that about 80 to 90% of land plants have some form of this relationship going on. Because of this, any area where you have a high density of plants and trees, such as in a forest, underneath the ground you will have a huge network of intertwined fungal mycelium. Now fungi are very malleable and capable of communicating with one another through their mycelial membranes. So just like in a big city, if you went underneath the pavement, you'd find a huge amount of network cables all communicating with one another. If you go underneath a forest, you will see the same thing just with fungus. When scientists realized the implication of this, they asked the very reasonable question of, are plants and trees capable of taking advantage of this mycelial network in order to talk to one another? And the answer seems to be, at least somewhat, yes. Due to the fact that mycology is criminally understudied, we don't know exactly to what extent trees can communicate with each other via this network, but we do know they can do at least some things for definite. They can observably transfer basic elements like carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus between one another, but new evidence is coming to light to show that there are more complex molecules that are being exchanged through these fungi. After studying tomato plants, a researcher named Song has shown evidence that through the World Wide Web, plants can send each other defensive chemical signals. Now, what does that mean? If a predator comes along and starts to eat a plant, but that plant has a backup mechanism which can send out a chemical, which is gonna deter that predator, then they can send a message in advance to the other plants in the neighborhood in order for them to all start producing this chemical. Therefore, they're gonna be saved in the future and this plant is gonna have more of a resource backing it in order to get rid of the unwanted predator. Similarly, if a new disease enters town and infects one of the plants, they can send a message to all the others in the close proximity of it, basically saying, get your defenses up, you are about to have a fight on your hands. Like I said, none of this stuff has been definitively proved yet, but people have already shown that plants can do processes similar to this by sending chemicals through the air, so sending them instead via the wood wide web seems a little bit less far-fetched. Hopefully in the near future, we can find out the true capabilities of this network. So the next time you take a stroll through a local forest, be careful with where you step, because if you were annoyed the last time your internet connection at home got kicked offline, then please don't do the same thing to the poor, poor trees. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna get more videos from the BMS, then please also hit the subscribe button and I'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye.